Good morning. My name is Steve, and I'm the pastor at Sisters Community Church, and I have my friend Dean here with me. Dean is on our board, and um, we thought we'd do something a little bit different through these next days, Monday through Friday, and walk with Jesus a little bit as he walked, and try to pull out some of the lessons that are in this Passion Week that we find in Scripture. So each morning, we're going to begin with a little devotional. Um, hopefully, we'll ask you a couple of questions. Maybe you can begin to think about those questions as we walk with Jesus on this particular week. So this morning, I want to read to you from John chapter 12, um, an event that happens around this Palm Sunday in regards to Mary pouring out some costly perfume. Um, let me read to you what John writes. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. When the great crowd of the Jews learned that he was there, they came, and not only because of Jesus, but also to see Lazarus, because he had been raised from the dead. So the chief priests planned to put Lazarus to death as well, since it was on account of him that many of the Jews were deserting and were believing in Jesus. Father, we pray that you would just speak into our hearts, and as we have a conversation around your conversation with us, may we grow to be more in love with you than we ever have before. And we ask this in Christ's name, amen. Well, Dean, as I read uh, this passage, there are obviously some things that really pop out, right? The characters themselves. Yep. You got Judas Iscariot, you got Mary, you got Lazarus who was just raised from the dead. You got Martha busy serving all the people who want to see Lazarus. And yet there's one thing that stands out in this that seems to be the subject of it, and certainly a lesson for us in it, that Mary takes this bottle, so to speak, or this mm -hmm. nard perfume, breaks it, and fills the room with the fragrance of it. And we are told that this was really costly. Mm -hmm. Some have said it was a year's wages. Um, as you read that and you think about this story, what's the application for us? What do you, what do you see in this? Well, a couple of things. One, uh, I, I read, did some study on nard. It came from India. And it was worth about $15,000 in today's currency. So it was pretty expensive. I kind of wondered how in the world did she get that. But I thought she was pretty extravagant in that she anointed his feet with this perfume instead of his head. And then I, I look at the cast of characters that were there, and I've got a couple of takeaways from that. One, Lazarus was reclining. Martha was serving. But Mary was worshiping Jesus. And I kind of wonder, what are our spiritual priorities at this time? Are we going to lay back and watch it happen? Are we going to be so busy serving that we don't understand and appreciate who Jesus is? Or are we going to worship at his feet like she did? You know, the story in Luke chapter 11 is much the same. Martha was complaining to Jesus because Mary was sitting at his feet, and she was busy fixing dinner. And Jesus said, Mary chose what was most important, and that was to worship. So as we get busy and we do all of this, I think we need to be putting our priorities on worshiping him and not losing sight of that. Yeah, good, good thought. And one of the things I was thinking, you know, sometimes in the name of stewardship, we try to be so efficient. And if uh, we look at efficiency from Judas's perspective, mm -hmm. it was all about um, dividing up everything and putting in the right place. 
it seems like Mary could care less about efficiency at that moment. She was more interested in extravagance. And, and I, as I read it, I thought, where am I extravagant in my life? Mm-hmm. Where, where do I give my all as an act of worship? Because worship isn't just lifting up our hands or going to church or reading the Bible. But oftentimes our worship is in the way we treat other people. And when Jesus said to the disciples, you know, blessed are you and that you've done it to the least of my brethren, you've done it unto me. I think about the time in which we're living where there are so many people in need. Mm -hmm. And isn't it an extravagant act of worship for us to to give of our finances, to to give of our time, to to give of our talent in ways that we can use our skills to help other people. And so in some ways, many people have an opportunity to be as extravagant and as worshipful as Mary was in this moment. It's just a different setting. Mm -hmm. I think she was extravagant in what she did because it cost her something. Not only did it cost her the perfume, but as I read, it cost her her humility. She was humiliated because she did something that women were not allowed to do. She let down her hair in public. And then she took on the role of a servant. Only servants took care of the guest feet. They normally took care of their hair. They anointed them with oil over their head, but not on their feet. Yeah. So she really humiliated herself. To me, that, that was pretty extravagant. It cost her something to do what she did for Jesus. Which raises another question. Where are we willing to give up our reputation or our prestige mm-hmm. or what other people think of us so that we might worship Jesus? Exactly. You know, there's been lots of times, I bet, in history, in our lives, where someone might have looked at something we've done or I think of a young person who decides that uh, they're going to go on the mission field instead of becoming a lawyer. Nothing wrong with being a lawyer. You can serve God as being a lawyer. But people could look at that person and say, what a waste of a life by not becoming a lawyer but going to some country in India. I think of, you know, some of the missionaries that have gone. Mother Teresa, for example, what an extravagant life she lived yet she lived in poverty her whole life because her extravagance wasn't measured by dollars and cents. It was measured by a life that was given for a cause that only eternity can reveal the preciousness of it. So it's a challenge for all of us, I think. And the other thing I thought, Dean, was she did something to Jesus in a sense rather than for Jesus. There are a lot of people that might do things for Jesus but before, and, and Martha was a little bit like that. She mm-hmm. was busy serving, right? She was, nothing wrong with serving in that capacity. But she sought the, thought the meal in some ways, that act of service, was more important than the intimacy of being at his feet. And I think there are lots of ways that we can be challenged by this passage on this morning. Where can we be extravagant? What does it mean for us to serve? What does it mean for us to take that which is really valuable and seemingly use it for those things that don't immediately have results, only eternity will reveal to us how good it is. What Mary did was personal. There you go. Martha was serving, Lazarus was reclining, but what Mary did was personal to Jesus. Yeah, Yeah. so that makes me think of where are we being intimate with Jesus? Mm -hmm. You know, Martha certainly knew about Jesus, but Mary seemed to be pressing into the Jesus that she knew. There's one kind of knowledge that's informational, and there's another kind of knowledge that requires intimacy. And so as we think about this particular Monday, um, I hope we would all be asking that question, um, where am I being extravagant? Mm -hmm. Where am I pressing it to Jesus? Where am I willing to be um, embarrassed for Jesus? Where am I willing to give up my reputation for Jesus. Um, And for that matter, as you talked about Lazarus sort of sitting there, some of them came because they wanted to see Lazarus. Mm -hmm. But the real issue is Jesus. And so sometimes we experience this blessing with God or we have this experience with God and we want to hold on to the experience and the blessing and we end up worshiping the blessing more than the one who has blessed. That's right. And so... There are a lot of little things in this story. And I would hope that as you think about this story, 
on this Monday, you would ask yourself some of those questions. Where can you find yourself at a place of worship? What can you do that is maybe extravagant? Where, where is your relationship with God? And what maybe you, or you're holding on to that you can give as an act of worship? One last word, Dean. What would you say? I would say I need to dig in and get closer to Jesus just like Mary did and not stay on the periphery and watch. Amen. If get you're into the watching game. this morning, um, our prayer is that you would begin to think about maybe there's a neighbor or someone in need and maybe there's something that you have that you value that your extravagance in regards to it by giving it, by using it, by honoring God with it could make a difference in somebody else's life. Jesus said about Mary, she will be spoken of throughout all eternity. Maybe that one little thing, maybe it's like that little boy, two fishes and a couple of loaves feeding a multitude. Uh, today on Monday in this Passion Week, find out how you can worship Jesus with your whole heart, mind, soul, and being. Thanks for being with us this morning.